All right, guys, so we last left off um, where we had the inspection on the home and there were a couple of things that we definitely weren't expecting to come up in the inspection considering it is a new home. Um, but this goes back to what I've been saying in all my other videos, like even if you're buying a new construction home, you definitely want to make sure that you're getting an inspection so that you know exactly what's going on in that house things get missed and my house is uh, evidence of that. You know, they missed some electronics that needed to be taken care of. They missed, uh, um, you know, a couple of things with the mortar joints um, around the concrete block of the house. Uh, a lot of it was small things, right? Nothing major, uh, but nonetheless, like the electrical, you want to get that taken care of because that's a health and safety issue. You know, I don't want to burn up in flames. I don't want my dog burning up my flames and, and my wife don't want that happening. Um, but this, this goes to show that you definitely need to get that inspection so that you know everything that's going on with the house that you're buying, whether it's a new construction or resale, definitely wanna make sure you're doing that. So uh, the next hurdle that we have is going to be the appraisal. That's one of our contingencies in the contract. And uh, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as we hear on, on what the house appraises for. Hey guys, uh, we just got the call and it's not looking good at all. Um, Came, turns out the appraisal came in low. Um, we had the contract for 330 with 20,000 in seller incentive, um, which essentially means a 310 net to the seller um, of the property. And it appraised at 310, um, which is not what we wanted to hear. Um, so we have to go back to the drawing board. I'm about to call Maya just so you guys can get um, an idea of how frustrating this is. So let me, let me dial her real quick. And we'll go from there. Hello? Hey, babe. How's it going? Hey, what's up? What's up? I'm driving. What's up? Hey, I got some, I got some bad news about the appraisal. It didn't, it didn't come in. What the f Yeah. Did they say, why? Did they, what are we going to do now? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to... We'll have to go back to the seller and, and try and figure it out. I don't know, but it's super frustrating. Um, I was super confident on that appraisal number and I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Oh my God. Okay. All right. I don't, okay. Well, All let right. me, let me call Caitlin and I'll let her know and, uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Okay, uh, so we figured out the appraisal, um, not without some difficulty, um, and what we were gonna do to move forward. I literally have a text with the agent that, like, I'm like, hey, the appraisal's not gonna be an issue, you know, at 3.30. Yeah. Look at what's going on in the neighborhood. And so confident that I got the listing agent to agree with me, and I'm not crazy. I also sent it to <laughs> a couple other people to make sure that I wasn't crazy. And it just turns out this appraiser doesn't know what's going on in this neighborhood. And that stuff does happen. Like there's nothing that we can do about it. We were, like you said, super confident. We ultimately went back, disputed the appraisal with comps. Um, and all we needed was what, the house to appraise of like 300 a square foot or? Yeah, it was uh, 301 a square foot. And um, as of right now, uh, it's, it's at 283 a square foot, um, where homes less than a mile from here are selling for $385 a square foot, $365 a square foot. And there's homes west of here that are less than a mile that are selling for 275, 265. So there is a good bit of a difference, but it's not like we were asking for $365 right. a square foot. We were you know? just trying to make it a 301 yeah. square foot. Apparently, all you need to do to get up to $365 a square foot is throw some shiplap on the walls and you're good. Because uh, <laughs> that's really the difference between our house and another house a quarter mile from here. Um, which is super frustrating. Um, but go ahead and finish. Uh, so yeah, we disputed it within 24 hours, provided the comps, and the appraiser ultimately said, no, I'm not moving from 310. So... Once we realized that was what we were having to deal with, we went back to the seller and crossed our fingers and our toes and said, okay, well, appraisal came in low. Can we adjust the price to 310 and still get $10,000 in closing cost assistance? And a miracle happened and they said yes. 
Yeah, in all honesty, it kind of worked out really, really well. Um, of course, having a lower purchase price does lower our mortgage payment, um, not by very much, but it still did. Um, getting the closing cost was a big help. Um, so yeah, uh, now we also, we also had to talk with our lender as well uh, because that $20,000 was gonna go towards closing costs, a rate buy down, prepaids. So keeping a lot of money in our pockets, right? Yes. Um, so we ended up opposed to um, doing a down payment, we ended up getting a piggyback loan from the Chinoa Fund, which after three years is a forgivable loan. Um, so in reality, we didn't come out of pocket for our down payment. Um, and, and matter of fact, uh, how everything's kind of set up now, we still get paid on the deal. Right. Um, so we're actually looking like we might get like $25 to $2,700 back when we close in the home. So everything worked out the way that it should. Yeah, I. it all works out in the end. It was definitely a big hiccup that we weren't expecting. And oh. now we just have... Um, just really like the final walkthrough. I mean, lending has to be kind of completed and all the I's dotted and the T's crossed and we should be good for closing. Yep, that's pretty much it. So fingers crossed, we should be all good. Got that, the biggest hurdle that we had to get over was the appraisal. And uh, now that we got that worked out, looks like it's gonna work out. So um, yeah. One step closer. Yep. All right, so we are on the way to closing, it has been a long road, had some issues pop up. And just to give a little recap, you know, we were searching, lost on four offers. Uh, I think three of them were to cash. Um, and we were just losing left and right. And we found this house. We put in an offer initially at uh, 325 with 20,000 in closing costs and, uh, or 15,000 in closing costs. and. The seller at first said, no, we, we don't think it's uh, it's going to appraise at that price, so we don't want to take your offer. And to me, that I thought that was completely crazy because if you look at what's going on in West Augustine right now, I, I definitely thought it would have appraised. Um, so either way, they waited the weekend and they got back to me and they said, hey, we're going to we're going to move forward with your offer. Um, we're gonna, but we want to do uh, 330 with 20,000 closing costs so that the seller nets 310 right so we get through the contract process we go officially into contract earnest money's put down and we get through the inspections pretty much all simple things on the inspection nothing to be majorly worried about um, and the appraisal comes up and the appraisal comes back at three hundred and ten thousand dollars now I really am baffled at that and when I when I look at surrounding comparable properties that that I use as comps and also that the appraiser uses comps he found some good ones I found some good ones but I think what we both did is I found the outliers right I found the ones that were priced at $365 a square foot and he found the ones that were priced at $287 a square foot meanwhile I'm just trying to justify $301 a square foot so I can get that $20,000 in closing costs and sentiment well, he used the, the lower end. So like, I, I think of it like a bell curve. Like I was really looking for like the left side of the top of the bell and he was really using the outliers on the far left. I was using maybe the outliers on the far right, but still in, 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 all, in all seriousness, they are good comps for that property because they're new construction of the same size within a mile of that property. So I, I really didn't understand his justifying of pricing either way. It appraised at 310, we disputed it. We came back and said, look at these comps. How are you looking at these houses that sold a longer time ago versus these houses that sold more recently? And for higher prices, of course, right? So that is always a big battle with the, uh, well, sometimes it is a big battle with the appraiser. And it's something that in the back of all of our heads as professionals, we worry about because at the end of the day, it's just a third party's opinion of value. So it, it, it's very, it can, it can work just perfectly, right? Um, or it cannot, like where the buyer thinks the value's there, the seller thinks the value's there, me as a real estate agent thinks, it, thinks the value's there, but this third party doesn't. Now they represent the bank, they have a job to do, I totally understand that, but at the end of the day, it's one person's opinion of value versus everyone else's. So it's, 
it can be very detrimental to the, the entire process, right? And I understand why the bank is trying to eliminate as much risk as possible, but um, at the end of the day, the difference of $20,000 in a mortgage for someone's monthly payment is not that much um, to really break the bank. So I, uh, either way, we lost the appraisal, we disputed it, and they came back and said, nope, we don't even wanna move forward with you. So that is what it is. Uh, we ended up going back to the seller and asking the seller like, hey, things have changed. You know, We're gonna have to come to a lot more money on the table than we thought we were gonna previously. And at the same time, Kane, my lender, who's with Pac Res Mortgage, um, really, really did some uh, Monday night quarterbacking, trying to get ahead of this thing, and also got me a piggyback loan for my down payment so that my down payment's only increased by like $180, or down payment, my monthly payment's only increased by $180, but I don't have to bring my down payment. That's through the Chinoa Fund. So we asked the seller for 10,000 in closing costs. We got the Chinoa Fund to cover my down payment, and both of them went through, right? So now I have the down payment kept in my pocket, roughly $11,000 and I have $10,000 in seller's closing costs. So I'm actually on the way to closing. I'm gonna be there very shortly. Actually, the traffic is much worse than I thought it was going to be, but it is what it is. They'll wait for me, right? I'm, I'm closing on this house. So uh, I'm actually getting a check back at closing. And I did roll my commission into the deal. Um, and that's one of the benefits of being a realtor, right? Is I, I typically get paid two and a half to 3% uh, to transact. So pretty much everything that I do buy, I get a little bit of a deal on because I get paid off of it anyway, right? So I always get a little bit of chunk of change, but because we didn't get that extra money um, from the seller, we had to contribute some money towards closing costs, but I'm still getting some money back is my point. I mean, I'm getting like $2,500 back going to closing. So altogether out of pocket, I have my commission, which I think came out at, at $77.50. Um, I have my $3,000, shit, got to get past the train here, I have my $3,000 um, earnest money deposit, and um, then I have the $10,000 in seller's assist, and then I have, that's it, yeah, so that covered all of my closing costs, and I'm going to get a little tiny bit of my commission back, so that's fantastic, uh, it's always great to go to the closing table and not have money come out of your account, at least not anymore, because uh, they're going to start drawing here at the beginning of July. Um, so, super excited about it. I do have some nerves going into it, um, but we looked at the area. We're confident with the, that area and what's happening in West Augustine. It really looks like it's about to take off, honestly, because it's just becoming such a cool little area um, that's not in downtown St. Augustine. So it's not all the hustle and bustle of downtown and it's right there, right across US-1. So. We're really excited about it, and it, it goes along with our long-term plan of building wealth through real estate, right? We want to build passive income for ourselves so that eventually we don't have to work every day, right? That's everyone's dream, right? No one wants to work every single day. We want to work when we want to and work on projects that we care about and uh, also spend time with our family. That's all. You know, the ultimate goal is really just to have fun with our friends and family uh, at the end of the day. So... This is our first step into, into that. We have the town home, right? And that's gonna rent and it's gonna cash flow for us. But that cash flow is really supplementing our, our larger payment over on this house over here. Um, but eventually when we move out of this house, which we hope to do in about two years or so, this will also be cash flowing pretty heavily. So between both, they'll have both their mortgage payments off and we'll probably be getting around $1,000 to $1,500 a month just from those two properties cash flowing on a monthly basis, one from just being a long-term rental, one being a short-term Airbnb, which is the house that we're buying today. So of course anything can happen, right guys? Uh, but this is our plan. This is what we want to do. Um, and we're, we decided to execute on that. So is there a little bit of nerves? Yeah, for sure there, there was. But after looking at the numbers, after looking at the area, looking at the plans that St. John's County, St. Augustine has for West Augustine, I, I just see nothing but potential in that property and it makes me excited to move forward. So we closed. We, we, we closed. We closed, we did it. Uh, it happened. Um, everything worked out the way that it should. Um, 
The appraisal was a bump in the road. Finding the house was a bump in the road, but we made it happen and you can make it happen too. Uh, you just got, all you got to do is reach out to us and we'll make it happen for you. We'll represent you on the buy side, sell side, investing side, whatever that is. A um, couple of things that since we moved in, we did have to spend some money on. Uh, maybe you can see my beautiful fence back there, um, <laughs> but I definitely need to sell a couple more houses in order to afford that fence and make it back. Um, house didn't come with blinds, so we had to buy blinds for the, the entire house. Uh, okay. We don't have gutters. That's still on the the to-do list, the to -list uh, to get some gutters here. Um, so, I mean, fence, fence costs about $8,000. The gutters are going to cost about $2,000. And then the blinds alone costs about I think it was a thousand bucks, maybe seven hundred to a thousand. It was um, with all the all the stuff that we had to buy at Lowe's: blinds. It was you know yeah. cleaning stuff. It was yeah, just general moving materials. Yeah. So, uh, but either way, finally getting settled, uh, the house is feeling more like a home, and uh, we're super stoked on it. So we hope you guys enjoyed this vlog series of us buying a home here in St. Augustine. And if you did. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you do need help looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, we'd love to be your go-to. Reach out to us. Let us know. We're here to help. See you.